all know Malik Neighbors, Marvin Harrison Jr., and Terry and Arnold. But what about the guys later on in the draft that the Chargers could select? I'm talking like day three. Well, I have three sleeper prospects that are a bunch of my guys. I've liked them for a while now. I've talked about them a little bit in some of my videos, so some of you might know who these guys are. But today, I'm going to be doing a full breakdown on these guys and why I want the Chargers to draft them. So make sure to like and subscribe if you do enjoy this content. It helps me out so much. And let's go ahead and start off with Renardo Green. So Renardo Green, he is a six foot, 186 pound cornerback from Florida State University. He is very physical on the outside and lives to play in press man coverage. He mirrors wide receivers really, really well. Doesn't get fooled by double moves or breaks in receivers routes. He's got really great change of direction skills. He stays in that hip pocket of those big and fast wide receivers very very well i mean just look at the lsu game to see how sticky he is in man coverage going up against guys like brian thomas jr very fast and very tall and malik neighbors six foot extremely explosive he was keeping up with those guys and even winning some one-on-ones he is only 186 pounds so he could stand to add about 10 pounds of muscle onto that frame it would help him out in run defense and also tackling but even though he is a bit undersized in that regard he was a very willing tackler he came downfield well set the edge well so that means that he has a good understanding of team run defense and the importance of setting the edge especially as a cornerback not a lot of cornerbacks set the edge well he ran a 449 he's very athletic he has fluid hips very physical with great hands at the line of scrimmage and he is more confident in man coverage than zone but he does play zone well for the most part when he struggles in coverage it's usually either because he's hesitant in his zone coverage or because he's too physical with the wide receiver and that's going to lead to penalties at the next level he also could develop better ball skills because he only had two interceptions these past two seasons with 17 pass deflections if he tracked the ball better when it's in the air he could have come down with a lot more interceptions i would love this pick though in the fourth round let Ben Herbert work his magic on him to add some muscle onto that frame and then let Jesse Minter develop his zone coverage ability. Get him a little more confident there because it seemed like he was just thinking too much in zone coverage and discipline him enough so that he doesn't get too physical running downfield with wide receivers and lead to penalty yards for the offense. I think he could be a serious cornerback one in the NFL, and he also has positional versatility. He played free safety, slot corner, and outside cornerback. Now let's move on to Malik Washington, 5'8", 191 pound wide receiver from Virginia. He was actually a four-year player at Northwestern before transferring to Virginia this past season. And obviously, 5'8", he's not tall, but he is very compact and he's almost built like a running back, which fits perfectly because the things that he does after the catch, it's really running back-esque. He is a smart, crafty route runner. He has shown the ability to run routes that set up his teammates for targets, so he's not a selfish wide receiver. He also does not take plays off and he runs every route like he's expecting the ball, which is rare to find in wide receivers. So those two things right there show me that he's got a team mindset. And that is a big thing that Jim Harbaugh and Joe Hortiz are looking for in prospects, the guys that have that mindset of wanting the team to win. They've always said it's team, team, team. He was used in the backfield and in motion a lot at Virginia and even threw the ball at times. So he's a player that you can like line up all over the field and motion often with that added threat of even throwing the football his biggest asset though it's his yak ability he is so agile and so elusive after the catch and he's got a great feel for the field and manipulating defenders into his teammates to set up blocks he also has a great feel for route running and he's good at finding the soft spots of a defense and sitting in them for a catch. And speaking of catching the ball, he was one of the most reliable targets in college football last year. He only had three drops on 138 targets and in his career, he only has six drops on 321 targets. 
On top of that, his contested catch rate is 64.7%, which is absurd for a 5'8 wide receiver with short arms, by the way. But it makes sense because you look at his vertical leap, he had a 42.5 inch vertical leap, which is 99th percentile for wide receivers. He was 12th in college football last year in contested catch rate, also second in receiving grade and second in offensive grade behind only Malik Neighbors, the only other better Malik wide receiver in this draft. He isn't crazy fast, and he does struggle against some physical press coverage, and also he didn't really run a full route tree when he was at Virginia. A lot of the time it's just kind of like five yard outs, and then sometimes they would make like five yard out and then go right down the field. Just kind of a variation of an out route. That's what he ran mostly. But those out routes we saw with the Chargers offense this last year, and I know it's a new coaching staff, but still, when you get a wide receiver that can just run those five yard outs on like a third and four, and you have a quarterback like Justin Herbert who can sling that thing out there faster than the cornerback can react to that wide receiver breaking to that out route you have a good chance at getting a first down and with a guy like Malik Washington who has shown the ability to run that route at a high level and also has shown the ability to catch the ball at a very high rate that's a recipe for a bunch of first downs. This is a wide receiver that has shown a lot of good stuff on tape. Yes, the height is a concern. The physicals aren't great outside of that vertical leap. He's not a blazing fast wide receiver. He's like, a, I think a 4 4 7 40 is what he ran. But I don't think we should overlook his positives just because we're focused on his weaknesses and his height. Joe Hortiz said, tell me what a player can do and what Malik Washington can do is give you a ton of yards after the catch, be a dynamic slot wide receiver and catch the ball consistently. I mean, just do you remember how many Chargers were dropping the ball last year? Just that alone, Malik Washington could be had in like the fifth round and he's not gonna be dropping balls. So that alone is worth the pick in my opinion. And also if Malik Neighbors or Marvin Harrison Jr. are the pick at five, I don't think it stops the, the Chargers from taking a wide receiver on day three in the draft. They could certainly double dip at that position they need the depth, but I think they could double dip at a lot of positions here, like wide receiver, cornerback, offensive line, even defensive tackle. And now let's move on to my last sleeper, Frank Gore Jr., the 5'8", 201-pound running back from Southern Mississippi. Now, we all know Frank Gore Jr. because of his dad, Frank Gore, who was the workhorse running back for Jim Harbaugh and Greg Roman in San Francisco. I think the connection here it's very real and this is the most likely sleeper to be drafted by the chargers in my opinion this guy just runs exactly like his father he's got great contact balance really good patience to allow lanes to open up in front of him and he is a downhill runner he's also shifty and dangerous once he gets into the open space he's got a nice little mm, juke move that consistently made guys miss in the open field and i know the level of competition wasn't great at southern miss but still, he's making guys miss a lot. And speaking of making guys miss, he had the third most missed tackles forced in college football at 67. And he also had the third most yards after contact with 824 yards. Now that offensive line at Southern Mississippi, they were not great obviously because of how many yards he got after contact but he just had such good vision to bounce runs towards the outside when he needed to and then he found room for yardage when there was very little to be had on the inside as well he was really good i mean listen he's like five foot eight i think it was even listed at five foot seven at the combine but he's a small running back he can fit into those little holes that are not there for a big guy like gus edwards he was top 11 in offensive and rushing grade by pff but we get it right he's a good runner okay now add on to that that he is a good receiving back as well he's not the best catcher okay he did catch 75 of his 94 targets though at southern miss and he only had three drops that is a 3.8 drop percentage and that's better than a lot of wide receivers in this class like ours truly Malik Neighbors. He had a 5.3 drop percentage. And the thing that sold me on him is that he can pass protect in the backfield for Justin Herbert, man. He had a 97.5 pass blocking efficiency this past season. And I saw plenty of plays on tape where he was able to give his quarterback time. So drafting Frank Gore Jr. is just the perfect 
fit, in my opinion. He is a downhill workhorse style running back that is also shifty in open space with good vision and patience. He can catch the ball out of the backfield and he can pass protect in the pocket on third downs. That sounds like a three down running back to me. And his concerns, listen, they are obvious, all right? He's not the most athletically gifted guy in terms of explosiveness, speed, and size. I mean, just look at his RAS score. It's not good. But he is a good football player. And he's loyal, too. He had plenty of offers to go to a bigger school than Southern Miss, but he stuck around there because he committed to them out of high school, and he was probably getting offered a lot of money because this is the NIL era. Those college football players, they are getting paid now. He is a perfect fit as a running back in this offense for Greg Roman, just like his father was. He was in the locker room with Jim Harbaugh when he was a kid, so I'm sure both of these guys would love to reunite and play together in the NFL. Make it happen. I think you could get him in the sixth, or maybe even the seventh round. I would love this pick so much not only because of the player, but because it's just a great story too. So those are my three sleepers. And if you did not see my video yesterday, don't sleep on Joey Bosa. 